Um, I believe you you can see my, my screen right now. Yes. Okay. Here at the right we have yes, a uh, all right. Here at the right we have a, a map of Costa Rica, which is divided into seven provinces. And we're basically located in Central, in Central America. Um, I'm gonna give a, a, an overview of the, some macroeconomic indicators and then move into the industrial office and retail market to, to go in depth into those markets, uh, at least slightly in depth. Uh, we have a, an economic growth uh, projected by the central bank of 3.9% for this 2022 and 4% for the 2023 period. Uh, and according to the International Labor Organization, we are currently on 17.1% of unemployment. This is good or bad depends on, depending on, on where you see it, because prior to the pandemic, we were uh, slightly below 10%. But in the peak of the unemployment, uh, in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we were on 21%. But we have three consecutive uh, quarters uh, of of this figure coming um, down by more than 1% per quarter. So we, we are looking forward for, a, uh, for these numbers to go back into 10% or 9% in the near, in the near future. Uh, the inflation projections are, are according to what the central bank wanted, uh, around 3% uh, of inflation rate. And as of January uh, 2022, the government debt was, represented 64.20% uh, of, of our GDP, uh, from that being 75% on domestic debt. Uh, consumer confidence increased by 3.2% um, compared to 2021, uh, sitting up in 42.1% at this moment, according to the University of Costa Rica. And Costa Rica Central Bank is expected is expecting that the exchange rate will be uh, pretty stable as it has been in the past years, as you may see here. Uh, it doesn't have abrupt movements or, or, or not even to, to, to up or downs. So, and they expect this to, to continue uh, as, as it is right now. Let me. This is a, an overview of the market uh, on the office. On the office, market. I, I would like to say that we're including here as an inventory only top tier buildings, A and A plus buildings from the metro area. So maybe that's why you see uh, an inventory pretty small in some of the cases. On the office market, we have an availability rate of 11.7, but it was just the same at the beginning of the year. Um, it's, it's not, it's not a, a, a good rate at this moment, but I, I believe you all know that the office market has been, been uh, hit by the COVID-19. Many office, office spaces have been uh, uh, unused um, because people are working from their from their homes, and this is uh, what the market is doing right now to to take these these rates bit down is actually not adding that much inventory to the to the market at this moment. The average price didn't move that much in the first quarter; it stayed around sixteen dollars per square meter, and the average cam is on two point seven uh, per square meter in the office market. In the retail market, we have an availability rate of only 2%. So it's, it's pretty wealthy at this moment. Uh, and the, the prices are pretty stable as well. They are around $20 per square meter with a cam of $6, which is pretty high, but, but, but it's, it's pretty stable. The prices haven't moved in, in the past quarter. And finally, in the industry, industrial market, we have a, a pretty wealthy, uh, Availability rate also of 3.7, with prices around eight dollars plus less than two dollars in the CAM. Uh, specifically in the office market, uh, we divided the country into uh, the metro area. We divided into San Jose East, San Jose West, and then we have Alajuela Heredia and Cartago, which doesn't appear here because Cartago is not that much like a labor a labor place for 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 offices. But as you, as you can see, the prices are pretty much stable. Uh, and, and uniform around the metro area, and they go low outside the metropolitan area, which is Punta Arenas and Guanacaste. Uh, Guanacaste is, is pretty hot at this moment, we would say, because uh, Coca-Cola recently opened their operation to, to manufacture and, and have their back office and, uh, facilities here in Guanacaste, 
recently uh, in the last 24 months for for the whole region of Central America and the Caribbean. So that's why uh, we have a, a very good expectations for this region, which is on the Pacific Coast area. Uh, prices, as you may see, Heredia is pretty pretty much uh, the highest prices for the office market. This is because most of the of the shared service centers is, and the and the medical devices uh, companies are located in this region, and I, I will talk about that in, in in a moment. Regarding the retail market, uh, as you may see, the metro area also has higher prices than outside the metro area, but that's uh, pretty much understandable. Uh, the the things that are um, not 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 working as well is for San Jose in the east part. The west has always uh, been characterized for low availability rates, high prices, and this is um, basically because many of the office spaces, many of the of the uh, residential areas are located in in the west of the metro uh, area of San Jose. And that is why the retail market is pretty wealthy in that region um, in a constant manner. Uh, prices um, are pretty much uh, reflect what I just said in the last slide, where San Jose West has uh, higher prices than most of the most of the regions, and Guanacaste, uh, with the arrival of Coca Cola, is rising at this moment for the because many people are moving to this area, not only uh, Costa Ricans but we have uh, many Canadian and American citizens moving to, to either retire or relocate themselves into Guanacaste area. In the industrial market, uh, Heredia, I would like to uh, stop at this moment to, to, to tell you about this, what, what, what is happening here. As you may know, we are a very small and narrow country with uh, access to both the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. Heredia is a strategic in this means because they, they are pretty much in the middle of the, of the nation. And anyone who locates here to do manufacturing, they can export either to Asia, through the Pacific coast or Europe, through the Atlantic coast, um, indistinctly uh, from, that, from this location. And going to the uh, North America region is, is just the same. To the Pacific coast, you can go to the West coast and to the Atlantic coast, you can go to the East coast. So that's why the industrial market is pretty wealthy and growing in the area region. And prices uh, are not that high. As you may see, um, the, the highest prices are still in San Jose West. This is basically because well, what I mentioned before that, that here is where the retail and the residential uh, is located. So many companies uh, are willing to be here for their distribution services, but local distribution services. Uh, international distribution services are, are usually located either in area or outside the metro area. Uh, prior to move into our, our listing, uh, I would like to present three, three listings. Uh, Jonathan is gonna help you with that. But I would like to stay here for a couple of minutes. Um, why, why, why Costa Rica? Because I would like to, to, maybe some of you don't don't know much about Costa Rica, and I would like to say some a couple of things over here. We have a free zone, uh, free zone regime, which gives companies that come and invest in Costa Rica uh, several important incentives, such as tax exemptions, including in income tax exemptions. And that's, that's pretty attractive for many of the companies because it reduces costs uh, from local operation in, in, a, in, a, in a significant way. We also have an electric supply that uh, comes from renewable sources on a 99%. This means we, we don't depend on uh, imports or, uh, or, or any other type of, of sources of energy other than wind, water, and geo geoelectric power. And we can supply all what Costa Rica needs in terms of energy. And we actually export to Panama and Nicaragua uh, electric power, electric supply to those countries at, at this moment. Um, we have 58 different free trade agreements, including with the US, European Union, and China at this moment in, in Costa Rica. We are ranked number one in human capital, innovation, output, digital skills, 
and future labor in Latin America, according to the OCDE and the World Economic Forum. And to mention two major industries uh, that are here in Costa Rica, we have over 65 shared service centers located in Costa Rica, including Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, Amazon, Citibank, 3M, Walmart, Intel, Equifax, and Moody's. And the other industry I would like to mention is the medical devices, uh, which make us to be considered the number one Latin American high tech exports at this moment. And some, some companies that we have at this moment are Boston Scientific, Philips, Roche, ICU Medical, Abbott, AstraZeneca, Baxter, GlaxoSmithKline, Pfizer, Bayer, and Smith and & Nephew. So in case uh, any of you have connections with this type of industries, either shared service centers or medical devices, uh, we can definitely um, work with, along with, with your offices in order to accommodate or relocate those companies into, into Costa Rica um, uh, surface. On the other hand, this being said, uh, exports grew by 25% uh, comparing 2020 to 2021. Uh, periods. Uh, there's a very ease uh, to export both to the Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast, and we have rich soils to harvest a vast variety of products. I mean, we are in a, in a tropical weather with at least six months of rain uh, year long, and some of the, our, the regions of the country has uh, between eight and nine months of rain with guaranteed 12 hours of sunlight year long in, in all the country. So uh, having this in mind, um, Costa Rica invests, um, invests on education over 7% of its gross domestic power, oh, gross domestic product, and it's a hub for Central American region for employment and uh, education. We have the number one university in, in Central America and the Caribbean region, which is Universidad de Costa Rica and the presence of top business schools such as Incai and Texas Tech. So this is just to make, have you in context and, and maybe you didn't know these facts about this small country in Central America. And as, as both uh, Daniel and Jonathan said, we are pretty new in the, in the Corfac family, but uh, we'd like to, to get to know every one of you and, and looking forward to do some business. So now, uh, Jonathan, if, if you could help me with uh, with the feature listings. Yeah, uh, Diane, you got that? Thank you. So I have the presentation that he, that, is this what you guys are wanting or this is what he just presented, correct? It's what he just presented. Yeah, there's, um, he, Francisco submitted uh, three different properties. Okay, give me a second here, I apologize. Francisco, I was uh, struck there by how similar uh, Costa Rica is to Ireland in terms of the industries that are based here. And I was I was just Googling the, the population of Costa Rica, and it seems very, very uh, uh, similar to Ireland. Um, and I was just wondering, uh, one of the issues we have in Ireland is, is Dublin is very dominant compared to the rest of the the country and is, is that something that you see in Costa Rica that everything's focused around uh, San Jose or? It is, it is actually, uh, uh, and, and, and I will go back in what you said at the beginning. Many of the sites that we have in Costa Rica, they have a, a, a I don't know how to call it, but like a broader site in Dublin as well. So for example, Citibank, yes. they have a site here and they have a site in Dublin. Uh, and many companies, uh, they have a site both in Dublin and San Jose. But yes, um, uh, what is happening now is that the government is giving uh, um, additional incentives for companies to, to either relocate outside the metro area or to come and locate 
right away into into a non metro area because yeah it's very concentrated in the metro area uh, out of our 5 million uh, people population uh, almost 3 million are located within uh, i don't know um, 30 kilometers so it's pretty dense in the metro area um, not that much in, outside the metro area so yes um okay thank you diane these these are one of the three properties that we would like to share with you guys this the first one is located in the northern part of the region it's a um a farm line for investment in a in a place called los chiles um a very important fact of this land is that for the past or for the last 27 years this soil hasn't received any pesticides nor chemicals so it's it's pretty much a really really rich soil um that could work according to the to the experts it could either work for tick for tubers for pineapple sugarcane orange or cattle uh, the amount of land at this moment is 650 hectares for one single owner but there's a chance or there's a possibility to add an additional 400 hectares uh for by two neighbors who are willing to sell as well um this this we visited this this property for uh, for a couple of times and it's really really nice uh they have a tick at the moment uh in place but as i mentioned it can work for either pineapple sugarcane orange or cattle at this moment we are requesting uh, ask, asking for a request for proposal we don't have a price uh range for this property but we are asking for a request for proposal at this for this property Okay, the number, the property number two and number three, you will see are located pretty close to each other. Um, this first one is, um, is a 1500 uh, square meter property. What you see in the middle of the picture at the right is our national stadium, where we yesterday beat US 2 nothing in soccer on the qualifiers. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very, very special region. It's, it's at, at this moment, it's growing fast. We measured that in the past 60 days, 145 apartments were sold in, in, within this picture. I mean, in this picture, 145 uh, apartments were sold. And this property um, has uh, already um, permits for both residential and conventional development. Um, three, 3,500 3, uh, full-time jobs are at walking distance from this property. And the asking prices or the price range is between 1.5 and $2 million uh, with an expected uh, cap rate of 9% as co-developer. We do have uh, an additional one, which is the next one, Diane. Thank you. Which is basically crossing the street, as you may see. But this is it's, it's bigger because it's 3,300 square meters, uh, and it, the municipality allows only for residential, no, no, no commercial. But um, it's bigger. Uh, the price, the price range is between 1.8 and 2.2 million dollars, and we also have uh, local developers interested in, in joining in a, in a joint venture with a, a cap rate of nine percent in order to invest for a, an, a, an apartment building in this in this property 8500 full-time jobs are within one kilometer radius for this from this property and both of them are as you may see pretty pretty close to what we call our central park it's not the central park it's called la savannah but but where the national stadium is located it's like our central park with many baseball fields soccer fields uh, um and running tracks and a couple of lagoons and well it's, it's a pretty nice place either to live, to work, or live and work, actually. Uh, so, well, yes, these are our three, our three feature properties of the moment. Francesco, just to get an idea, what are the square meter prices for an apartment or square feet, whatever you like? No, I, I, would, I would like on, on square meter. Yeah, uh, in order to, to buy, it depends if you're buying in a, in a pre-sale or when the development is already done, but it would be somewhere around $800 and, and $3,500. $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, 
for the finished for the finished product. For the finished product, yes, thirty five hundred yeah. for the finished product. Some, uh, but okay. I mean, if you would ask me for an average price, it would be around two thousand dollars. Okay. That's that's shell and core or with um, floors and uh... ready to move in. Ready to move in. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Francisco. Sure. Um, there are a couple of other assets which uh, I know that um, I believe uh, our colleagues in Germany and the Netherlands wanted to share. Diane, do you have the uh, slides for those? Oh, well, thanks, we're... Diane. You admit me. I'm just coming in. Coming in by phone. While we're waiting, Francisco, you mentioned the number of products, teak and everything from cattle to, to other things. Are there export? Where's the market for them? Is it domestic? Is it export markets? For the most part, it's uh, export. I mean, uh, some of the fruit could stay in Costa Rica, but uh, for the most part, it's, it's, it's for export. We have the presence of, of Chiquita brand, Dole, and other international food companies in, in, in Costa Rica, which basically, not to, not to say 100%, but over 95% of the production is for exportation. Okay. That's, that's good. Strong, strong contracts in place. Yes. Um, Mark. Um, Mark is here, I think. Yes, hello. Ah, good, good there you are. Sorry, I couldn't see. I was looking for you. My apologies. I'm sorry. Mark, thank yeah. you. Please, from the Netherlands, if you'd share your, your property here. Yes, Daniel. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Um, we have two uh, properties uh, which we uh, would like to uh, present to you. Uh, the first property, which you can see in the slide, is located in uh, Landsmeer. That's uh, very close to our uh, capital, Amsterdam. It's like uh, 50 uh, minutes by bicycle here in the Netherlands. Um, uh, the target sale purchase price is uh, uh, 4.8 million euros. Um, the estimated uh, cap rate is 6.16. Uh, net operational income uh, is uh, 296,383 euros. Gross initial yields is 7.14. Um, it's uh, an office space uh, uh, in combination with um, um, uh, separate uh, warehouse and offices, which uh, is fully occupied and um, rented out to uh, seven uh, different uh, tenants. Um, uh, we think that this property is a value add uh, property. Um, uh, we have uh, some some uh, wealth at the moment, and I can share it uh, in Dutch. My screen, you see the our investment memorandum. It's in Dutch, but I can uh, share it with you. Uh, let's see. Hope it's it's. Can you see my screen now? Nope. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, is this now uh, shareable? Yeah. Yes, yeah. See it now. Thank you. You're welcome. And unfortunately, it's in Dutch, but I uh, would like to um, uh, tell you something about more about the, the property. Uh, um, uh, here you see uh, the, the, the gross rent uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, the object is uh, approximately um, uh, 2,740 square meters. Uh, what I just said, it's uh, uh, partly office space divided by uh, three uh, levels, uh, which is rented out the office part to uh, Fisher Scientific. It's a very well-known uh, international company. And the other, what I just said, are uh, seven different uh, warehouse and offices, which you can uh, probably transfer to a last uh, mile 
uh, object rented out to uh, some uh, some uh, uh, exploitants. Um, total of uh, eight tenants. Uh, these are the main specs in Dutch, of course, but the uh, gross uh, square meters uh, are at 2,740 net. Uh, leadable floor area is 2,459. It's uh, greatly uh, accessible. Uh, highway A10 is uh, very near. And um, there is a vault of 2.39 years uh, from uh, the 1st of March counted. Um, and building is 2011. We are looking for a buyer and we offer a split um, uh, position. So whoever uh, has uh, an international buyer, we uh, are gladly want to um, uh, go through the specs and um, uh, look for uh, a combination deal. Here's your little map uh, where it's located. What's the, what's the vault? Yeah, I'm sorry. The, the vault is uh, two points, uh, uh, let's say 2.4 years. It's here in Dutch. Okay. And the rent per square meter? Uh, the rent per square meter, um, it's divided. Um, if you've got one moment. The gross rent is It's uh, almost 130 euros per square meter. 130, sorry. I'm sorry, 100, 140 uh, euros a square meter. Per year. Per year, per year. yes, yeah. exactly, okay. exactly, yeah. 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 Let me see some more office uh, pictures so on the front. Is uh, the office is uh, fully accessible, and at uh, the sides, the combination warehouse and offices, which uh, the, the the warehouses is in, uh, on the ground floor. First level is office uh, space. And these are rented out to uh, seven different tenants. That's that's uh, uh, separated from the office uh, space. So again, um, we would like uh, to discuss uh, uh, whoever has uh, an international buyer. We are glad to share uh, uh, on the buy side position. Hi, Mark. Yeah. We've um, bought a lot of similar stuff in Ireland for M7. Yes. Who buy on behalf of um, Blackstone in the main. So yes. I, I mean I don't know if you've tried them for for this already, but I mean uh, happy to pass it along um, um, to M7 if uh, if that would be useful. Um, yeah, we're, we're glad to. Yeah, we're we're now uh, also M7, but we didn't have contact yet because uh, this uh, this meeting was. Uh, it, it, I have to say this is an off-market uh, proposition, so it's not. Uh, fully uh, public on the market in, in Holland. Uh, but we have the opportunity to uh, present it off market uh, to, to you now. Right. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll happily pass it along. If I mean, if, if you know M7 yourselves, you, you probably, uh, the, the guys I deal with obviously deal with the UK and Ireland. So uh, you, yeah. you, you, may, you may know somebody better yourselves, but. Uh... It's a very good uh, suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Maps, I believe you also wanted to present a property? Sure. Um, we, ha we have another object, but we uh, can also present it after afterwards. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, my apologies. Please, Mark, carry on. I was too quick. I'm no, it's sorry, okay. Mark, you no, 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 Mark, I'm, tot I'm totally fine, totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Thank you very much. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm sure. 
I have that slide too, if you want me to do the screen share for that second item. Or yes, please. You... Yes, please. Yep. So I think you have to stop screen sharing for me to. Oh, do sorry. It on... That's okay. Thank you. Uh, so the second property is located in uh, Haarlem. It's a, 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 a city uh, near Amsterdam in um, uh, the metropolitan region of Amsterdam. Uh, it's in the nor northeast of the, uh, the center of, uh, of Haarlem. Uh, the property type is mainly office, but also um, a component of uh, 431 square meters of warehouse. Um, the target uh, sale price is uh, 3,995,000 euros. Uh, estimated cap rate is 6.22%. Uh, uh, net operational income is 2486, uh, sorry, 248676, and uh, gross initial yield is 7.22. Uh, um, average square meter price is uh, 124 uh, euros per square meter per year. Uh, uh, square total meters are uh, 2,308 square meters on a plot size of uh, 2,025 uh, square meters. It's a value add uh, property. Um, it's fully rented. Uh, uh, commencement date of the current lease agreement is uh, the 1st of July 2018. Uh, there are an additional uh, 15 parking spaces in the enclosed parking garage at uh, ground level uh, minus uh, one. Um, and they offered as a as is where is a property. Um, these uh, this proposition we also present to you as uh, a split position uh, to buyer side. Um, probably M seven is also a, a party. We uh, this is also a north market uh, proposition. So our if you have uh, parties who are interested investors, we gladly uh, uh, have the combination. Would you? Mark, would you be able to send um, to send me the uh, the uh, I say the brochures um, so that I can share them with my investment team and give you some more clients? Yes, of course. Uh, I will gladly do that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I will send you uh, the information. Uh, yeah. I think Max, we're now ready for you, please. Thanks. Thank uh, you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Claudia will share. So we couldn't put it in the uh, in, in your format. I thought this would be nice to share with the with the international group because or the American group actually, um, since this is a, a Tesla center. So um, one of the first of its kind um, in Germany, actually. Um, it, it, this used to be actually a Fiat uh, showroom, so um, so so uh, you see what's happening. Um, it's now a Tesla showroom. Um, it has a 15-year contract with 14 years remaining. Um, what's interesting, it has an inf it has a yearly um, adjustment to uh, CPI, so to um, the Consumer Price Index. As you know, right now it's uh, given the Ukraine-Russia situation and other factors. It's uh, we're now in Germany at seven percent, um, and I think in most other countries, pretty much the same. So you have an annual adjustment to um, to inflation, eighty-five percent of it. Um, Claudia, if you could go to the next page. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at a initial yield of just over four percent, but this is on a triple net contract, um, so it's essentially net. Um, purchase price is about seven million, um, and what we've done, we've um, we've calculated. Cloud, if you go to the next page, one more. 
Yeah, we've calculated the um, how the rent is going to progress if we assume just 3% inflation per year. So 3% increases every year or 85% of the 3%. Um, and that's, you know, in the past 3% would have been probably above, um, above what's the target from the ECB in terms of inflation. But I mean, now we're at 7%. So um, 3% is actually probably in today's world is, is, is more or less conservative. If you calculate that and then divide the, the years of the lease left, you're you are buying below or sorry, above 5% yield. Um, so it's it's really a long, long income investment. Um, we don't have so many of these nowadays because, you know, there's a, the whole hotel um, investment sector, the hotel business is not really working so well anymore. Also in the retail side, where you used to have long contracts, it's it's not so popular. So this is um, it's one of the few long income products uh, that we have at the moment, um, and it's it's backed by Tesla. So you have uh, actually the uh, the holding company of Tesla guaranteeing the um, the contract. Um, so it's really an investment where you don't uh, you know you don't need to think very much. You're buying the rental contract essentially, uh, backed by real estate. Um, so anyone who has potential clients for that can uh, can name them, and um, very happy to to offer the investment. Very good. Thank you very thank you very much, Max. Um, of course, all of these things mean that basically these are part of the inventory that everyone has, every Corfac member has, and it's a great thing because it's uh, certainly worthwhile asking um, your, your investors if they're interested in, in other markets. So I thank everyone for presenting their products and certainly feel free to follow up with uh, Francisco, with Mark and with Max to, to learn more on each of them. Um, is there anyone else who'd like to present uh, a property? If not, then I propose that we just head on, if we may very briefly, I, I'm cognizant of the time and the closing minutes that we have. Ian, you attended MIPIN. Maybe you could just share a, a bit of a view of uh, how the mood was there, particular themes, uh, anything that you'd like to share uh, about your experience? Um, well, I mean, as I say, I, um, certainly my own impression was um, attendance was slightly down. Um, on, on previous years, but not by much. Um, certainly the mood overall was, was pretty positive, um, albeit I think um, one of the themes we, um, we saw was, um, you know, just some concern around um, rising bank rates. Um, so, I, I mean, I think we've seen um, and, and Max probably knows more about this than me, uh, German bank rates move out um, quite significantly, um, so much so that, um, you know, even Irish banks are starting to become uh, competitive, which is not something we've, uh, we, we, we've seen for long, uh, for, for, for a long time. But overall, you know, the mood was certainly, you know, obviously I was only speaking to investors about Ireland, but it was, it was certainly very positive. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of U.S. money um, pointed in this direction. Several of the, the large U.S. investors, the sort of Heinz, Invesco, have raised um, very large amounts of um, sort of private investor money, which is look, looking for income-driven investments. So, you know, like the Tesla um, um, uh, uh, f f facility there. Um, you know, so uh, they're, they're certainly sort of interested in any any sort of income driven investments that are um, that are out there. Um, and um, yeah, I think overall, you know, we, we, we certainly found it um, as, as useful as always just to, to, to kind of reconnect with with, with, with clients who, who might be able to make it to uh, to Ireland quite so often for, for us, the barometer is always Ireland not being a core market. People don't have to take meetings with us, but you know, I think I had over 27 meetings in two days. So you know, it's, it, it's a sort of a, a lot of a volume of interest. Um, and uh, as I said earlier, I, the, the highlight would have to be the 
my trip to the Anglefelt restaurant where I, I scored a free cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you very much, Max. Anytime. <laughs> and, and, and also anytime anyone else wants to come. <laughs> Hopefully next year. Yeah. So, uh, no, that was very much appreciated. Uh, you know, it was great to, 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 to be able to, uh, to sort of uh, make use of our, our Corfac friends and contacts. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was certainly the, the sort of feedback I have from Mippen. Thank you very much, Ian. And it's a, it is a good trend. It's a good trend for all of us to hear, of course, that the markets are certainly being more active. Funds are certainly active investors. And uh, I think that's a trend generally throughout Europe and I hope elsewhere as well. In the closing minutes that we have, I'd like to share that um, our next call will be Thursday, May 26th. And after that, we will have the pleasure of meeting in Dublin on July 12th. July 12th would be the travel day and July 13th would be the meeting. We'll provide more details on that agenda. And if there's anything that you would like to see on the agenda, please let Jonathan or myself know. Um, shall I ask, is there any other business or any other topics that other people would like to share with us for purposes of this call? If not, then I will thank everyone, Jonathan, unless and Diane, unless there's anything further to share. I no, I, I would just say that Daniel and I will be talking with Ian next week about plans for the Dublin meeting. And um, I will send you all shortly a link for the hotel, because from what I understand, they have rooms for that Tuesday night, July 12th, and they don't have any rooms at least under the SIOR conference rate on Wednesday, July 13th. So I'm trying to get a handle from the hotel on what the room cost would be for both nights. And then I'll send you a link so you can all make those reservations. It's at the Conrad and uh, looks like a very nice property. I'm sure Ian can speak to that, but um, thank you. Uh, just around the corner from our offices. So the, the <clears throat> finest part of town. <laughs> Great. I think we're all looking forward to being with you. Yeah. It'll be a great opportunity. It's been a while since we've, we've all been together. So um, that's great. Unless there's anything else, I'd like to once again thank everyone for participating in the call. Looking forward to seeing you on May 26. Of course, we have occasion to speak with each other at any time and hopefully often. And once again, just reminding people that the properties presented by Francisco, Mark, and Max are all part of our, our each of our inventories. And hopefully we can be in communication with you to learn more about them. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank, thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.